The 2022 NFL season is officially in the books. Time to get ready for the 2023 season. Hello and welcome to Patriots All Access presented by Geico. I'm Steve Burton. We congratulate the Kansas City Chiefs on their Super Bowl victory and look forward to the game when New England takes on the Chiefs here at Gillette next fall. But what will the 2023 Patriots look like? Dan Roach tells us the team building has already begun. For the second time in four seasons, the Lombardi Trophy has a red and gold reflection. The games are over, a champion has been crowned, and we're officially on to the NFL offseason. The Patriots have been conducting business here in Foxborough for over a month, and one of their first priorities was to find an offensive coordinator, which they did, bringing back a familiar face in Billy O'Brien, who was with Bill Belichick from 2007 through 2011. Just a great opportunity for my family and, and obviously, uh, you know, coming back here to work with Bill and, and to work with uh, the staff and these players, just uh, really excited about it. The Patriots also went with a familiar face in their search for an offensive line coach, as Bill Belichick reportedly tabbed his first ever New England draft pick in 2000, former offensive lineman Adrian Clem. Clem spent last year as the run game coordinator and O-line coach at the University of Oregon. Lobs a pass toward Parker, yeah. open, touchdown, <laughs> Patriots! Acquiring new talent is a priority for the Pats, and the new league year starts in mid-March. Expect the Patriots to be busy in both free agency and trades. And what happens with the roster depends upon what happens with their own players. Will free agents such as Jacoby Myers stay or go? In the 2022 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select the NFL Draft takes place in April in Kansas City. The Patriots have 11 picks heading in, including the 14th overall. So the bottom line is no one was happy with eight and nine last season. So there's now a strong sense of urgency for the draft, free agency, off-season conditioning, everything else going on with this Patriots team, Steve. They're getting after it. And Rochi, the clock is ticking. No question. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Coming up on All Access. Good news, Patriots fans. The captain is back. You know, I'm very thankful for the support I received. Thankful for the opportunity. First, an inside look at the coaching staff's week in Las Vegas for the East-West Shrine Bowl. Bill called me on the phone and he's like, hey, uh, what do you think about being a head coach? And I, I was like, oh, shoot, yeah, that'd be great. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of the New England Patriots. By Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots. Proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. And by AdCare. Be recovery strong. Speak up. Reach out. Ask for help. Call AdCare at 800-ALCOHOL. I'm Alexandra Francisco, checking in from Gillette Stadium for your latest social media minute. Patriots may not have played in the Super Bowl, but Lawrence Guy still came out of this weekend with a new championship ring. The defensive lineman participated in celebrity chef Rachel Ray's 2023 Super Bowl recipe playoff, and his backyard nachos beat out Lions running back Jamal Williams and Jets linebacker Quincy Williams for the win. It's Lawrence. Love was in the air last week with Valentine's Day on Tuesday. Both Cody Davis and Daniel Iquale celebrated their anniversaries with their significant other, and Mac Jones took his girlfriend Sophie out to dinner in Boston. Now before we officially close the door on the 2022 season, Matthew Judon mic'd up at the Pro Bowl made for some great content between adorable interactions with his children and a conversation with Derrick Henry about how much he loves New England. As for Judon's golf swing, we're gonna work on that this off season. And with that, we're on to 2023. Catch you guys next time for the next Social Media Minute. Tom Brady, a six-time champion. Good morning, guys. I'll get to the point right away. I'm retiring for good. We were really lucky to have him. As fierce as he was as a competitor, and as tough as he could be, he had a great heart. 
I just want to tell him congratulations on one heck of a career. He is, there's no other competitor that has the heart and the will to win. Mentally tough! Why to play the time, do your job! They don't have the kind of heart that he has. I truly cherish special relationships and so fortunate to have had Tom Brady in my life. Thank you guys for allowing me to live my absolute dream. I wouldn't change a thing. Love you all. Welcome to our Bob's Discount Studios with Mike Reese and Paul Perillo, Tom Brady. Did it catch you off guard? Did he catch you off guard? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's hard to be stunned, Mike, when he already retired once, right? But yeah, I mean, I, I kind of felt like uh, there was another year uh, that, that he wanted to come back. You know, that sour taste of, of kind of a disappointing season in Tampa, I thought he would come back for one more. I thought he was still playing at a high level, so in that respect, it surprised me. But what did he always say when he was here? 45, right? Yeah. Like, that was the marker. 45. So in that sense, listened. it didn't surprise me. Does it stick? Does he stay away for good? Yeah, I think it. I think it does stick. I think that the way he sounded, Mike, you know, getting a little choked up and kind of poking fun at himself for retiring already once. I think it sticks. I think it sticks too because of the other side of his life, right? The personal side. Mm -hmm. I think you add that into it. I think that he he's ready to move on in that direction. Michael Jordan came back twice. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eliminate it as a possibility. <laughs> Just saying. Will the Patriots do something this year for him? Yeah, I would, they have to. Mike, uh, this is a guy who's di just different, transcendent player. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of things that the organization is going to do, but I think it starts uh, probably at some point this year with at least an announcement, uh, Mike. And we'll talk about this with our Hall of Fame stuff that we get a chance to be to be in the room. But yes, Steve, definitely. I, I would say no doubt in my mind. Well, I don't think a one-day contract is necessarily mm -hmm. a top priority. They want to give the fans a chance to give him his due. All right, guys. Well. Cannot wait for that day because it's going to be very, very interesting. Don't go anywhere. We'll talk to you a little later on the show. we got a lot to talk about. We'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Welcome back to All Access presented by Geico. College All-Star football games have been going on for over half a century. This year, the Patriots had a unique opportunity to get a first-hand look at some of the best draft eligible prospects when they coached the East-West Shrine game earlier this month. I just represent ourselves in this thing, so this is a, a reflection of our whole organization. So let's just go out there and look good, man. Go, 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 go. Give us an opportunity to see, you know, over 100 players, you know, hands-on coaching. It was a good week for us. Don't give up big plays. Oh, yeah. Stay attention to the situation. First and ten. Come on, fellas. Let's go. A little bit of news happening related to the Patriots. Adam Schefter reports the Falcons and Patriots will be the two coaching staffs for this year's East-West Shrine Bowl. Bill called me on the phone and he said, like, hey, uh, what do you think about being the head coach? And I, I was like, oh, shoot, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, Dad. We got that. We got an hour and a half for positional meetings. I got the instructions from Bill on how this thing was going to work. This is all on you. You're the head coach. Whatever you decide to do with these guys, then you ask them to do. They need to do it and get it done. And you deal with all the other stuff that's, that goes on with the East-West Shrine game. Last question would be, so are it is false. I found out that I was going to be calling the plays and coaching the D-lines. They're not having an iPad, so like, that's not like that. So I would rather do this than sit at my desk any day. So like, this is great. Uh, and I would say on the, the one to three meeting with Bill, I would say like, if, if we haven't looked at a guy yet on tape, I would like suggest that we go ahead and look at him. I think in that meeting, he's probably going to just talk briefly about each one of the guys on our roster. So be able to say something about him when he asked. You know, when we found out about this, it was almost like it kind of popped back into season mode for a bit. We just got to get caught up on that part of it and be ready to go. When Coach Belichick told me about this opportunity being an offensive coordinator, quarterback's coach, I just jumped at it. We 
have two NFL staffs coaching the East West Shrine Bowl. When I got that call, the Patriots were going to be one of the teams that said yes and jumped at the opportunity. I was certainly excited. To have patience with each other. So we're like, look professional, act professional. I want to I wanna have a, a good looking practice out there, fellas. Not just for my sake, for yours too, and the Patriots. Not just representing ourselves in this thing. So this is a, a reflection of our home organization. So let's just go out there and look good, man. And uh, practice our ass off. It's okay. a blessing. I would have never known waking up that morning that I would have been able to get some wisdom from him. And uh, he was giving me a tipping pointer on punt return to peak the returner. And he was saying that that would give me a better angle to get a better block. So, very wise man. It was awesome. Um, it was really, really cool to be coached by those guys. Obviously, growing up in Massachusetts as a pass fan, uh, being coached by uh, Coach Belichick, Coach O'Brien, uh, and the rest of the staff. It was really cool. They're coming in, they want a job. Right? They're trying to take somebody else's job, right? Those guys don't want to give those jobs up. Hey, on that one, just make sure you get a little bit more depth, okay? Because there's a... Trying to just, you know, give them as many hints, right? Techniques or, you know, just preparation that they need moving forward. You're not really comfortable with anything until you do it, right? You take this first uh, running back one-on-one. All right, let's get it. I think usually once I get out on the field, you know, and start working with the guys, then I am in a comfort zone. Step downhill, strike this thing, and then bring it up, okay? Don't just go in with your hands, all right? Come down and be physical, just like we're gonna do first play nine on seven. Oh, no, we coming off the ball today? We coming off the ball today? Yes, sir. People say energy is contagious, so I just want, hey, maybe a kid might be a little tired today, maybe a kid might be sore, ankle hurts, whatever, hamstring, but me, them just being around me, me being all jacked up and excited all the time, maybe they'll be like, all right, cool, let me match coach's energy. Go, 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 hey, push your depth though, push your depth, you don't want to run there at three yards. We're here to compete, we're here to win, we're not here to enjoy Vegas, we're not here to go on the strip, we're like, we're not here to do all the extracurriculars, like we're here to get better as football players, we're here to develop and we're here to win. We don't lose, we win, all right? Come on, y'all not playing physical enough right now. It's a really good opportunity for us to get a different lens of the player. I think, you know, for our coaches to be able to spend an entire week with these guys, both off script, eating meals with them, but also like getting them in the meeting room and sitting down with them and just getting a feel for how they learn, what makes them tick, the competitive nature that they have, their practice habits. Um, we get, you know, a, a unique familiarity with these guys at an early stage in the process. And I think it's really exciting. We gotta get in and out of the huddle, okay? We're gonna try to get the calls in faster too, but we gotta get in and out of the huddle, fellas. All right, come on. I've learned that about myself that I can, I can actually get up and do some of this stuff and be comfortable with it. And his quarterback, not afraid to throw it in there so far. Seeing some of these guys in person, being able to work with them has been, you know, a pleasure because you don't get that opportunity. Gave us an opportunity to see, you know, over 50 players, you know, hands-on coaching, so meetings and practice drills and corrections, do it the next day, things like that. And then see another 50 plus players on the other team on the East team and watch them in similar scenarios. You know, there'll be a handful of players that are drafted from the East-West game, probably more not drafted than drafted. Uh, again, it's good to get some exposure and, and understand on some of those uh, players that are not the high draft choices. This is a different type of player that would, you know, fit as a, you know, as a role player. And, uh, or as a you know lower draft choice player that might have um, you know more upside. Uh, it was a good week for us. Oh, the oh, the oh, the oh, the oh, yeah. He didn't know it was coming. For a more in-depth look at building the 2023 New England Patriots, tune into all Patriots social media platforms. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of the New England Patriots, by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. You know, I'm very thankful for the support I received, thankful for the opportunity, and you know, it's, 
it's really not about me. It never has been. Um, you know, it's about this team, about this organization. I'm just a small part of it, and uh, grateful to be back. Grateful that the Lord has continued to provide a way for me here in New England. Welcome back to Patriots All Access in our Bob's Just Conference Studios. Back with Mike Reese and Paul Perillo. Good to see you guys again. Coming off the Super Bowl just a couple weeks ago, great game. 38-35, Kansas City, Philadelphia. Patriots are not in that category just yet. How did they close the gap? Yeah, the, you know, the one thing that stuck out to me, guys, was, was the offense. It was obvious, and I think that's got to be priority number one is fixing Mac Jones and getting the offense mm. to a level where they can compete if the game might gets in that kind of a shootout. Bill O'Brien is a great first step in that, but they have to fix Mac Jones. That's priority number one. And I want to amplify what Paul just said and mm -hmm. what Dan said earlier in the show in his package. Like, I think a huge step bringing back Bill O'Brien and, and even Adrian Clem working with the offensive line. Like, those two, I think, are decisive steps, Paul, to at least get you headed in that direction. Talk to people. Um, we know Billy O from having been here, but they say this is a quarterback-friendly mm -hmm. coach. You're saying fix Mac Jones, yep. and they're, t they're saying quarterback-friendly coach, proven track record. To me, that's a good first step. What is their biggest need? And before you even answer that question, I want to answer it first. Yeah, I like that, Steve. <laughs> Ask like that? yourself a question. Thank you. And then answer it. I think they need a weapon. Mm. I think they need a You guys may not agree with that. No, that's first, I, I, biggest I need, need but I think yeah. they need a weapon. Yeah, yeah, I think they need weapons. I, I, I'm going to also say they need protection. So I'll start up front. I'll let Mike talk about the weapons or, or the defensive side. I won't, won't put words in your mouth, but they're going to need tackles. Uh, and, and I mm -hmm. think that pass protection kind of got Mac Jones in some bad habits last year. I think he didn't trust his protection. You saw it as far back, Mike, as the summer in training camp. And then in the preseason games, I remember a pick against the Raiders where he kind of left the pocket for no reason yes. and, and, and threw an interception. I don't think he ever looked comfortable behind the pass protection that he got. And I think that's priority number one is you have to get him more comfortable. So if I ranked him, I'd say the protection, okay. number one corner, you know, because I'm thinking about the AFC. You're talking about closing the gap, Steve. I mean, I, I, who's covering Stephon Diggs? Mm -hmm. Who's covering Jamar Chase, T. Higgins? I mean, those are the teams you're shooting for, right? So that would be my number two, weapons would be number three. Are the Patriots big-time players in free agency now? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much, you know, well, let's go two years ago, Mike, when they spent, sure. whatever, $250-plus million. Maybe somewhere in between that and what we've seen, you know, on a regular basis. But I also think trades are in play. I think this can be a fascinating offseason with all the different avenues that they can go in. Uh, they have some cap space. They have some 11 draft picks, so they have some, some resources and flexibility uh, to make a trade with some of those picks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think they will be players. To me, the answer to the question, Steve, comes down to Jacoby Myers. Like, I, hmm. I just try to drill down. To me, he's their most important free agent. Um, and it's when I look up and I see Joe Tooney playing for the Chiefs and winning a Super Bowl, and I see Ted Karras playing for the Bengals in, you know, big-time games, I'm thinking to myself, those guys maybe should still be Patriots. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to let Jacoby go? And to me, you're, you have big-time players. Well, maybe re-signing Jacoby would be the start to being big-time players in free agency. Good stuff, you guys, all the way around. All right, Steve. Appreciate you. Thanks. Absolutely. That'll do it for this edition of Patriots All Access. For Mike Reese and Paul Perillo, I'm Steve Burton. We'll see you next month, everybody. <laughs>